Welcome to our third episode of the Choosing Optimism podcast. We have a great show on the line for you today, talking about to talk health, happiness, and prosperity to every person you meet. As we start, I'd like to introduce Miss Paula Jesty from the Miss MI Understanding Club. Paula, how are you doing today? Good, thank you. And how are you guys doing? Good. And I also want to get our other two co-hosts on here. I have Mr. Russ Thomas and the infamous Mr. Nick Prilliman. <laughs> Good to be here today. Absolutely. We're glad to be here. So as you tuned into our first two episodes, our first one, we talked about Optimus International's history. And when we decided we were going to break down our creed, last time we had the promise yourself to be so strong that nothing can disturb your peace of mind on our second episode. And this time we're talking about health awareness with all the stuff going on in this pandemic that we're having going on here. I wanted to start off with something. Uh, I always like those quotes that we start off with. And I found this one that goes along very well with what we're talking about. And it says, sometimes when you're in a dark place, you think you've been buried, but actually you've been planted. And I think that that covers mental health to a T from my own personal experiences and just other people that I've talked to. So talking about health, Paula, why don't you tell us a little about, a bit about what the MI understanding mission is and what they do? Well, quite, quite straightforward. Our mission is to create a community of support. That's really what we wanted to do when we started the organization. So MI understanding is a play on words and it really kind of tackles what the challenge with mental health is. My understanding of mental health is gonna be different than yours, Shane. It's gonna be different than yours. It's, we, we all have our own understanding. And so when we're trying to support and understand what somebody else is going through, we really got to take a moment and a pause and ask our, ourselves, am I understanding? The organization started, uh, we did, uh, we were working with Western University here in London, Ontario, and they were doing some research around the fact that 70% of mental health could be solved with early diagnosis and treatment. And when you looked into that, that was really saying, so for youngsters under the age of 12, if they had their schools, their parents, their communities, the medical community, all working together to support them, they could overcome some of these early issues around anxiety, around worries. We could make them more resilient. So we thought, you know what? I think we've got, we've got to do something here. So we created this communication tool to help families start a conversation. And when I looked at the bigger optics, we had the medical partners, we had the school partners, and we sure as heck had the parents, but we didn't have a community partner. Uh, so I just we needed an Optimus Club, and we did an Optimus Club uh, that we called the Kids Mental Health Optimus Club of Canada. And so that really kind of gave us those four optics to really support families in southwestern Ontario up here in Canada. That's a great story of how it started, and I don't think people realize how important mental health is to everybody everyone well you know what it's funny i was talking to a group today and saying you know our our awareness of mental health has increased during this pandemic i don't know if our understanding has fully increased especially when it comes to kids i'll obviously talk a lot about kids mental health since that's the focus of the organization but when we're talking a lot of the resources that we develop are really focused at parents families aunts uncles and getting them to recognize what little ones are going through and in turn get everybody to understand what everybody else is going through, right? And we do it storytelling and with resources that, uh, as we jokingly say, we're the Walmart greeters to the mental health world, right? We help families start those early conversations. You know, it's okay, come on in, let's have a chat, right? And we create safe spaces to have those discussions. Yeah, I think people don't realize that it's a lot of times you need to be how to start a conversation. That's probably the most difficult part. I think when it comes to mental health is people don't know how to start a conversation. They want to, it seems like, but they don't know how to do it. And it looks like that you guys have a really good um, packet on stuff of how to start the conversation with, you know, parents and therapists and children, you know, and kids and their family and stuff that well, we're a starting point, right? And I think another thing we've seen during the pandemic is, you know, and I'll tell the, your audience a little bit about our resources. My background is in television. 
So I knew some wonderful folks who used to work with the Muppets and Sesame Street and Jim Henson. So I went to them and basically said, hey, if you could help me, uh, we could build some characters and go to our medical and our educational partners, get a firm foundation for these stories, but really start a story around giving parents those tools to start an early conversation. So we have a dog and a chicken talking about getting a new teacher and, you know, a storm coming and afraid to play volleyball, uh, dodgeball, right? And really what it is, it's a story you can watch. Uh, we try and talk up so parents can watch them as well. Obviously they are focused on kids, but the idea is, as kids say to us, if a dog and a chicken can talk about it, so can we. And the other challenge is we find a lot of families who, as you said, Jane, don't know how to start these conversations. This is a good, really good way of doing it, right? Because you're not necessarily sitting and listening to this is the anxiety and this is how it works. You're watching a story that everybody can relate to. We're a communication tool. We really spend a lot of time making sure that everybody watching can get something out of it. So if you're trying to find out about anxiety, you can get something out of it. If you're the person dealing with anxiety, you're able to say, that's kind of what I'm going through, right? So it really is a communication tool to start, to start the whole process of acceptance and understanding. Well, you can't, you can't run a marathon unless you start. So this is awesome Absolutely. that you guys have a great starting point. Absolutely. And I think during this pandemic, it's become that much more important because there are some phenomenal resources out there, right? We certainly don't claim to be the only one. You guys have got some amazing ones down in the States. We've got some really solid ones up here in Canada. But for a lot, in a lot of cases, parents are full. They're so stressed right now. We're still under a lockdown up here. So kids are learning from home. Parents are absolutely full. So to sit down and look at extensive websites and try and put, bring in that information, think about it for a bit, disseminate it to the kids, it's too much, right? And so what our resources do is offer families really easy resources. So if you go to our website, it's videos, it's some tips and tricks, there's some activities there, and it's a good way to start a conversation if you're seeing those early challenges in your house. So one of the things I saw when I was uh, looking over your website was the PIPE program the Parents in Partnership with Educators. Do you want to talk a little bit about that to help us understand what that is? Absolutely. And, you know, we've worked really closely with the Optimist Clubs throughout this program. I mean, if you do go on the website, 99% of the stuff is available to families at no cost, thanks to Optimist Clubs, right? That was something that was really important to us. Um, so, you know, you're able to go on and kind of look through and determine what you want and what you need. Before the pandemic, we did community exhibits, which again, we did quite often in partnership with Optimist Clubs. So they would be out in the community and it was basic information that we were handing out to families. What happened was as a result of that, we had a lot of families coming to us and saying, actually, we need a bit more help. Um, you know, we're struggling with our school. I don't know the language to use when I talk to my family doctor. So we developed this program in partnership with Western University. And it really is a short and sweet program where we sit down with families, uh, talk to them. And it's nice because we're not medical or educational. We're talking to them quite often in a Tim Hortons. We spend more time in Tim Hortons here. Um, but we sit down and kind of help them put their story together, get them to get a copy of their school records, all their notes together. We organize it in a nice binder. And then quite often we go in for the school meeting. And really what we're trying to do is get families to recognize the importance of working with their community partners. That stigma piece when it comes to children under 12 is the fact that when your child is struggling, the first thing as a parent you think of is the fact that this is my fault. I, I'm a bad parent and this is why the, this child is struggling and so you don't want to reach out. And what we're trying to encourage families to do is say, actually, it has nothing to do with your parenting, but you do need support. So let's reach out to those community partners. So that's where the PIPE program has come from. We're just about finished our second research paper on it and the feedback has been phenomenal. So families two and three and four years after going through our program uh, are continuing the relationship with their school and their child is doing much better. So on average, what is like, do you, how long is one of your programs? Is it like, is it like a six month program or is it something depending on each individual basis or how do you guys decide what programs fit where? Um, as far as the Piper in general, in either one well and it, we've got a couple of ways of doing it we've really worked again closely with optimists and our community partners to figure out what works 
So with the videos, anybody can go on those, right? And that's really an opportunity for families to start conversations to get the language. If they do need more assistance, they at least get a little bit more confidence on that front. We also work with clubs who show the videos at events and exhibits. And again, it really shows that they are part of the community, right? I have the big pitch up here, I always say to people, when it comes to children's mental health, everyone's an optimist, right? Um, so the video program in that aspect is used throughout the community. Of course, the exhibits are on hold, unfortunately, but we were working to get optimists to really get that information out into the community. Um, and then the pipe program, to be honest with you, our goal is to be short and sweet. We want to get in there and we want to uh, kind of really lift those families up really strengthen their school relationships, get them to out there getting the support if they need that extra help. And then the minute they don't need us, we're gone, right? Because I'm, I really believe that parents have the strength to support their children if they feel themselves they're supported. And that's another big thing that we say with Optimus Clubs. When we first started working with the different groups around Southwestern Ontario, the feedback was, you know, we can't do this, we haven't got a medical background. And, you know, my pitch was, you don't need a medical background. You know, optimist clubs have been supporting children's mental health for 100 years. And you've been doing it in the capacity of the community events, the soccer programs, all of those uh, holiday activities. Those are all things that help parents support their kids, that help create that community of support and create opportunities for kids to develop resilience. And you, we need to remind the community, especially right now, that that's what we do and that's what's so important. And so all of the resources that we have really are resources that Optimist Clubs can use to get out and spread that word around supporting children's mental health. So moving back before, you said you guys had exhibits that go through, and I'm, I wrote some of these down, but one of them was like how to manage worries, separation anxiety, bedtime routines, the importance of play, uh, picky eating, which I could have used with my sister growing up because she yeah. was such a picky eater. But, uh, you know, you want to talk about some of these exhibits that you guys do in just different ways that you guys get the conversation started at least? Yeah, so again, what we've done is we, we developed communication tools and we found uh, our exhibits and we've divided, we've devised them so they're different for different clubs, but basically they're big colorful posters with basic information for families. And we find this that clubs, uh, we've got a couple of clubs in Windsor that use them on a regular basis. And if you put them up, you know, families get in a little close and they're like, hmm, I knew that. Oh, I didn't know that a piece of information or great picky eating is what we're dealing with. And they move in a little closer, right? And then we have uh, handouts, free handouts with basic information, tips and tricks and resources. And again, this is really just to get families to start those early conversations and give mom and dad a little bit of confidence around the fact that, okay, look, you're having a challenge. This is a good time to start developing some resiliency. And, you know, hopefully this information gives you the tools you need to help put a plan in place. We're currently developing a brand new project called MI Friends. And really what that is, is a program that families can use at home to start those early conversations. But it's also going to give families an opportunity to start tracking some behavior, come up with some strategies and build a plan with their child. A lot of families we talk to right now are dealing with meltdowns, big feelings. You know, kids are experiencing stress. They're experiencing their parents' stress. So giving families a tool that they can use with their child to kind of, you know, overcome those challenges and see little successes, right? You mentioned picky eating as an issue with, with your sister, right? You know, it's amazing the amount of, amount of families that come up and say, oh gosh, that's what we're dealing with. And, you know, the, the information on these handouts is, you know, for some kids, they really struggle. Don't turn it, don't turn mealtime into a battle, right? Make it fun. You know, meet them halfway, create opportunities where, you know, you can have a relaxing meal and there isn't that stress because unfortunately it starts small and then kids build up and all of a sudden dinner time is the worst time of the day. Right. And we really want to give families some support around that. So they feel, especially right now when everybody's isolated still, that they can support their kids and get past these things. So uh, looking you know, forward to, you know, you're just one optimist club how big of area do you guys service like you know population wise or to that vicinity 
Well, right now we're Southwestern Ontario, but our goal is, and I think there was some talk at Optimist International about making MI an international program, but our goal really is to reach out to as many Optimist clubs as we can. Uh, we're working right now to try and get our resources translated, uh, starting off with French, of course, for Canada, Spanish for the United States, so we can reach a larger audience. But we really want to create tools that all Optimists can use to get that message into their community. Because with, with children under 12, there's a lot of hope, right? There's a lot of opportunity to work together, and it really comes down to supporting parents and showing parents that Optimists really do understand what they're going through, want to be there for them, and want to create opportunities where they can help support their, their family while they try and build resiliency in their kids. And I can speak from personal experience uh, with dealing with a child that has anger and doesn't know what's going on and was very thankful I had a family that was supportive, but also, you know, uh, healthcare professionals that were supportive. Um, I know that Paul and I, we talked about this before, but I was, my daughter has, you know, obviously done well, not li through everything with because of reaching out and getting her to talk about her feelings so they don't keep you know it's not like a pop bottle you keep shaking until it blows up and you can't control it anymore so this is just i personally feel that this is such an amazing program uh, oh thank you Shane. well you know what's interesting what i remember about your converse our conversation uh sorry to cut you off but what i remember is you kept coming back to you and i said you know how'd you get through that and you said it was the optimist clubs right yeah, and very true fact. It, if it wasn't for my Optimist Club, I wouldn't be sitting in this chair right now. And what I, I love... Child, I couldn't help my own child. It gave me projects to help other children to make me feel better. Right. And the big thing we find with mental health is a lot of people are like, how can I help? Grandparents are like, how can I help? Aunts and uncles, friends, how can I help? When you're going through it, you want to be able to blast just support me, <laughs> just don't judge me, just give me something, you know, <laughs> smile and a thumbs up from the sideline sort of thing. But what I love about the Kids Mental Health Optimist Club is every single member is there because they've been touched by this and they feel passionate about it. So it's a key group of people and wherever we go and do activities, people are just like, oh my gosh, how can I make a donation, right? How can I support this organization? Or more importantly, how can I get involved? is the big piece we see, right? So it really is, I think, again, a good time for Optimist Clubs to go out and get some new members because there's a lot of people struggling right now, whether they're supporting a child with mental health or they're watching from the sidelines as a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle and kind of saying, what can I do? Um, and really what we want to do with this program is create something so optimists can say, let's start a conversation, right? And I'll tell you, it's also an effective tool. I love when I go to clubs and we play the separation or the social anxiety and the hands go up and everybody says, that's me, <laughs> right? And all of a sudden we give about 20 minutes while the optimist clubs openly admit who has anxiety and who's had a struggle. That's what we need to start doing, right? We need to be able to have those conversations. And if a dog and a chicken make it happen, so be it, right? Uh, where does most of your guys' fundraising come from? Are you guys funded through certain um, different businesses in the community or is it a fundraising detail? How do you, how do you guys support these programs? Oh. Excuse me as I take a cup of a sip of tea. Um, there's a couple of ways. Uh, we work really closely with the Canadian Children's Optimist Foundation, which allows us to go after some charitable grants. And we have some really solid community partners here in southwestern Ontario that believe in what we're doing. And I think especially because we work so closely with the hospital, the school board, uh, the Child Youth Development Clinic at Western University, we've gotten a good reputation as this is just not information we're coming up with. We're not a mental health organization, we're a communication tool, but we're working with solid people. We're making sure everything on our website is properly vetted. Um, so I think that's the big piece is that we've got some, some solid community partners. This new program we've de developed, MI Friends, we are looking to different Optimist clubs to help us subsidize the program. It's not a lot, it's uh, $50 at this point, and the kids get a stuffy version of the, of the puppets, and they get a full online program where, like I said, parents can track information, uh, come up with a strategy, and come up with a plan. Everything on the website is, uh, you can print it off. So again, it's a tool that families can take into their doctors 
or the school and say, this is the challenges we're having. This is what we've tried. This is what's working. This is what's not working. Then yes, there is a cost to this program, but what we're trying to do is not only support families, but we're trying to uh, collect research so we can do further research around kids' mental health. And we wanna collect a portion so we can start giving back, right? So we can start supporting other programs in the community that are helping kids. And correct me if I'm wrong, this club has been around for six years? Six years, yes, six years we've been around. Wow, you guys have made some serious traction in six years. Well, the funniest thing was none of us were optimists before. So we all kind of went in going, um, <laughs> how is this going to work, right? And unfortunately, I was the leader of the crazy people going, come on, this is fantastic. This is exactly what we need. Um, you know, and so in Southwestern Ontario, I'm sure when they hear I'm coming to speak, they're like, oh my Lord, here she comes, right? But my pitch really is now more than ever, we need optimists to put these communities back together. I spoke to 70 teachers last Monday and it just broke my heart, right? I mean, the questions coming in were, how do I support parents? I can't do this anymore. You know, parents are falling apart. Parents don't wanna do this, right? Um, and feeling like nobody's out there. And the, it's interesting as we take this MI Friends program and the community, the one thing since this pandemic, which I think has been so detrimental to kids' mental health, is the fact we've, we've lost our community net. You know, all that parenting that happened in the playground while you're waiting to pick up your kids or on the sidelines of the soccer while you're watching the soccer game, right? Where you said, oh my gosh, I can't get my kid to eat. And somebody said, try this. Or I can't get my kid to go to bed. And somebody said, oh, I've got somebody you should talk to. Or here's three suggestions, right? Um, that's all gone. Families are isolated and on their own. So I think Optimus Clubs have got to continue to push community programs that really bring that community hub back to life, that community net together for families. That is a good point that uh, that, say, that community net is lost. As I'm very fortunate here in Montana. We've actually been able to go to school since last um, August. So at least the it's not like when we were in the pandemic to begin with, when teachers were able to see what's going on with the students in the school. So. Sorry, is my dog had an opinion there for a second. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, should my, you should have heard mine barking at the neighbor next door about, about a half hour. Ago. Always the case. Yeah, um, no, that community net that, like I said, we've got, and I think the sad thing was with the teachers, because I've talked to them a couple of times, but with this round, we're back in lockdown again here in southwestern Ontario. And uh, I think the hard part is parents have given up. You know, when teachers are reaching out saying, hey, your kid wasn't at school today, what's going on? Parents are like, I can't do it anymore. Right? And the implication to little ones is going to be huge. So we really are going to be going back to those very simple conversations around change, uh, around separation anxiety, um, you know, and, and what we try and do, especially with our videos, is we try and get a little strategy in there. So I know change is one of our more popular videos, and we took the, the dog and the chicken are getting a new teacher, right, which is a real reality for some kids who are struggling with anxiety. So the mom talks about instead bendy thinking, right? Instead of thinking the worst that's going to happen, let's think of the best thing that's going to happen. So maybe, you know, he isn't the scariest teacher you've ever had. Maybe he knows new games that you haven't learned yet. And maybe he has fun days on Friday, right? And so it's just those little teeny tiny things that aren't necessarily mental health, it, uh, you know, diagnosis or analysis necessarily, but it's those conversations that create resiliency and give little ones successes so they can start overcoming some of the challenges that they're, they're dealing with. I, I just, for one, think this is a fantastic program, you know, obviously oh, from personal you. experience and just, it just intrigues me that there's people out there that are willing to do this. I mean, it's just, it's a, such an important aspect of our society. I, I feel like I'm kind of taking up all the airways myself. Nick, Russ, do you guys have any questions? Uh, you know, Paul, I absolutely understand wh where you're coming from and what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, you know, for for uh, for me, I always say that Optimus saves children's lives. But uh, on the other side of that is we also help save 
you know, our, our, our members' lives and people around us' lives because, you know, the mental health aspect of what we, what we look at every day is so important. And sometimes we can't find enough time to be able to, uh, to help and react and listen. I mean, there's several things that, that all of us are going through that, that affects us, uh, you know, collectively, you know, with this, this pandemic and the way it is. And you guys still on lockdown, you know, down in South Georgia, Nick and I, we're talking about getting back together and, and doing some videos together and getting back in the same room. And, and we're excited about that. But, but there's so much from a standpoint that, that our members have gone through and are going through still. I mean, the depression, the isolation and the uh, desperation that's there. I got to believe that that's similar to the same thing that children are going through. And, and if we can't learn to deal with those things ourselves, sometimes we need somebody like you to help educate us, to, to help our children. So, so it's interesting that the approach is, is more proactive, get ahead of that that negative herb working with the children, you know, and, and we get to be an ear to listen to what their problems is. And sometimes I have a problem with that, just the listening part, you know, so that, you know, we got our mouth that we can speak with and we can share those ideas. And then we have, you know, we have that, uh, that compassion that has to be there. So I, you know, I, I really, I, I'm getting excited just listening to you and my mind is going so many different places. So, you know, and it all gets back to, you know, Russ Thomas, do you have a heart that you can feel and understand what these children are going through or my neighbors or my friends. Uh, you know, during this pandemic, I, I had the uh, unfortunate uh, sadness of my brother's uh, a girlfriend, you know, lost her life during this because of all those things that uh, that maybe we could have helped with, that we could have gave her a bright, uh, a bright light to hold on to, a, uh, you know, a little bit of vision at the end of the time, so many different things. But but, uh, you know, today in different different respect, and, you know, I probably would know that, you know, I need to reach out. I need to touch, you know, those children's hearts. I need to have education uh, from people like you and your organization to be able to help. So I, I, uh, I got to imagine that, uh, you know, we, we, we have such an opportunity, as you said right now, to be able to make a difference in children's lives, in people's lives, and, and those members that were around. And what a great lesson. Well, as you're teaching the children and the parents, you know, all of us that are, are listening to you and around you, you know, get a better positive aspect of it. And we can go, wow, you know, look what I learned. I'd love being an officer just for that reason, to be able to meet people like you and to hear your story, to get excited. And then when I get off the phone, I'm going to call somebody. You should have heard Paula, man. She was so great. And she's got this organization working within the Optimus realm. And, and it just makes nothing but great sense. And well, I, I think, uh, Paula, it's it just, you know, to listening to the program, it's just, it, it makes you proud to be an optimist. And, and I'm sitting here thinking, boy, I wonder how we could, we, my club could get involved in this because one of the things that uh, we were talking about, about the optimist, I was listening to you talk about the children and talk about the members. One of the things that, that, uh, that, that happened to me uh, I, my wife and I have no children, but we, we've been we've been married for uh, over 52 years. And uh, of course, we found ourselves, I mean, we don't usually argue much or, or anything like that, but we found ourselves on top of each other, you know, when we were when the when everything was shut down and we were we had to stay at home, we had to stay at home and uh, we had gone for a while and then we know we we said something to ourselves, you know, we have not had we never had an argument during the whole time. And I think it was because, and I really do believe because of the optimist organization, because uh, I never, I never got depressed. We, we didn't get depressed. I, I, I was concentrating on thinking about, oh boy, what, what can I do? Because, you know, our whole world is turned, turned upside down. All the projects that my club did were all hands on with children. All that went away. And so we had to figure out, okay, how do we, you know, how do we do what we are doing, but a, in a different way? And I think by concentrating on those kinds of things and and really looking at the positive side of, of what at least what the Optimist organization has taught me, uh, it, it really did. It, it just it it made it, even though it was a rough time because you know like everything else and of course it wasn't as bad as I hear it is in Canada. We weren't locked down quite as as strictly as you as you people were, but mm -hmm. uh, or are, but uh, we were still it just your whole life has changed, and and I really uh, I, I I don't think I got depressed one time. I mean, it was weird that you couldn't do what you normally do, but the fact of the matter is that that thinking about the positive parts of things, thinking about what 
you know, what, what we were going to do once this was, was passed or what we could do now, uh, it, it was a really a, a boost to me. And, and as I look back on it, I was thinking, my gosh, I, I don't know. It had to be the optimist, I think, because I just, uh, we, we did not, we did not get depressed. We did not uh, get in arguments or anything like that. We just, it, we, we kept focused on the positive things that were going to, were happening and were going to happen. And, and uh, though it's not the same as the, the program you're doing, it's still, I think, uh, uh, it, it, it's all goes to part of that. I, I think being involved in the optimist organization certainly can help you from your standpoint of your, of your, of your, of, of all your, you know, your mental health, your physical health or whatever, because uh, if you, if you really look at that creed that we have, and if you really try to live by that, by that creed, you began to really focus on the positive aspects. And so when bad things happen, like the pandemic or other things, you're able to, to I guess, weather that storm. And I, I think that, uh, you know, that's the, the gift that optimism gave to us. And of course, you've really taken it to a, to a whole new level, your club and, and what you're doing in the community, particularly with mental health and children. And that's something I'd, I'd I'd be interested in hearing more about because I think that is really something that I know my club would love to get involved in that. I think. Well, and you say with the program, I mean, I, I'm thinking as you're talking, I'm like, that's some mighty impressive bendy thinking you're doing there, Mr. Nick, <laughs> right? Which is a really big part of what we talk about. It, it, it's that, right? And when we talk about children's anxiety, it's, it's, there's an opportunity for optimism in the sense there's an opportunity for resiliency. We're not looking to solve mental health. Right, and if we look at the stats, some people are going to be anxious for the rest of their lives. But they, there is research to suggest teaching kids skills to overcome some of their anxieties when they're younger are going to make it easier for them to deal with when they're older. So bendy thinking. We have another video on inner coach, which is quite popular, and that's listening to the voice in your head. Like I said, yes, our audience is 12 and under, but as I tell people. Our topic as kids, our target is their parents. And it's amazing how well some of these videos do work in clubs. Ironically, we have one on sticky thoughts and sticky thoughts are where you get a little full, right? So it's thought sticks and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And we portray that as a, a short and sweet video where the fellas all of a sudden covered in sticky notes, right? Hmm. And the other character is saying sticky thoughts are when you, know, you let thoughts build up and all of a sudden they're overwhelming and, you know, uh, that's been really popular with women <laughs> during and moms or wives during this uh, pandemic. I've had more than a couple of ladies write in and say, thank you very much. That really gave me a good understanding of why my husband was driving me nuts. Right. <laughs> I wasn't dealing with his anxiety. So it was building up. And so I'd say to him, can you pass the tea? And he'd lose his bananas. Right. And so watching the video, I have a better understanding. We sat down, we had a chat, we've worked it through. So the videos really are talking about stuff we all deal with, right? But that stigma has been there for a really long time. And that's a big piece of what we try and do. Increase that understanding and decrease that stigma. And the stigma comes from everything from, you know, not judging somebody, right? Who's going through it, being an adult or a child. The big one I always talk to clubs about is you put on a great event and there's the one kid in the corner causing problems. Instead of judging them, Go over and ask the family if they need a hand. Go over and see if there's a way that you can support and engage the child. And if the child just wants to sit on the sideline and just watch, accept that, right? That's a really good opportunity. Uh, you know, if we talk about this, this line in the creed about talking about happiness and not judging and supporting families, that's a good way of doing it as well, right? It doesn't, when we think mental health, sometimes I think we immediately go to the top end, right? And then we say, we're not a doctor, we shouldn't do this. Mental health isn't a broken leg. It, it isn't a case of let's just all stand back and let the professionals deal with this. There's a lot families can do at home. There's a lot schools can do, and there's a lot community can do to create that community of support and help little ones and their families, uh, you know, kind of overcome some of these challenges and be the best they can be. And Russ, it's probably a good thing that we're so far apart because my God, we'd save the world. Could you imagine our energy? The two of us, that would I'm be with, it. I mean, would clean it out. So much to be done in so little time, right? I mean, I can't wait to go back to 
the club, you think, I have energy. Wait till you meet, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Russ and I have decided I'm, to take on the world. <laughs> and I'm the introvert of the group, so. No, heaven's sakes. <laughs> but yeah, I think the big thing with this is, like I said, this program, we really took the time to develop it with the Optimus partnership. So we really want to make it so this program can support Optimus clubs internationally and help as many clubs as possible start those early conversations and we have such a, a nice level different group levels of how can you help like i said start with the videos and get the videos out there they have been developed with the school they're a really nice way to reach out to community partners we joke because the kids mental health optimist club you know you'll hear them in meetings and it's like you know the children's hospital thames valley the kids mental health optimist club and i'm like look at us right but it's because we're out there and we've made those partnerships with those groups and organizations you know the other piece is there's a lot of families out there right now on their own who just who need a little support they're either raising a little one on their own uh, they can't, uh, families don't really understand how to help or maybe a bit more judgmental. They could use some resources to help start those early conversations. We've got the community exhibits. We're working to try and get the pipe program to help as many families as possible. And then we have the MI Friends program, which is again, a really nice way of, you know, while you're watching it, which, which I love, you got the stuffy and there's the character talking right to you saying, you did it. You didn't think you could, but you did. And we're, that was amazing. And let's try that again next time. Or that didn't work. What did we do? What do we need to fix? And let's go back and create a plan, right? So a really pro neat programs to really encourage everybody to recognize how when it comes to children's mental health, everybody's an optimist. So those, uh, those uh, videos are on your website, which is? Which is www.miunderstanding.ca. And that's really what we're trying to get people to do is ask yourself, take a pause back. And are you really understanding uh, what somebody is going through? Are you really taking a moment, as you said, Russ, to, to understand what they're dealing with? Um, you know, because a lot of reactions we're seeing now where people are kind of losing it in public and having meltdowns, you know, that's not funny stuff that we should be filming. That's opportunities for somebody to reach out and say, you know what, you're really having a hard time. Right? How can I help? It's as easy as that. Yeah, and sometimes it's that simplest question, you know, that we forget. We forget to ask that, you know, what can I do? How can I help? It's always good to have something in the back of your mind, like like maybe one of them little videos and with the dog and stuff, and and, and be able to relate that because I could relate to that. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a 39, all right, 67 or so, but you know, <laughs> but uh, I, I I can relate to that, and maybe I get uh, more simple as I get older. But I know that I'm not too old to learn uh, some valuable uh, uh, you know items to move forward with when we're working with children and we're working with young adults and when we're working with people like me. I mean, I I can understand it so. We really appreciate what you're doing, and and it uh, and, and it's so necessary. And I've always said that as optimists, it's just what we do is so necessary. And you said it right, just just perfectly. You know, people and children need us more now than they ever had. You know, uh, before. So to talk health, happiness, and prosperity to every person you meet, it really rings true to home. And and I'm so glad that we've got the opportunity with Shane to take us through these. Uh, these podcasts, because uh, I learn something every time I walk away and I can, I can implement it. And, it. and it comes down to something you said, Nick, too, you know, it's, it's what you get out of it, right? It, where do you start is the biggest question I get. And it's, it's kindness. It's kindness. You know, we've seen over a hundred families with the pipe program. We've got half a million views on our website. I can't tell you the amount of optimist clubs and schools and community groups I've talked to. And it's those little things, right? It's the parent saying to me, it's the teacher who held the door while I dragged my kid in kicking and screaming backwards, right? It's the, it's the kids in the playground who picked up their boots when she kicked them off. It's the people that took, that had the courage to reach out and say, I'm gonna do something really nice for you, right? You're having a heck of a time. I'm gonna, here's a tea on me, right? You're having a heck of a time. I'm just gonna listen. I'm not gonna pass comment. I'm not gonna tell you about my story, how it was worse. I'm just gonna listen. We can all do those little acts of kindness. And that's the first step when it comes to supporting everyone's mental health. 
right? And, and that's easy to do. And then, you know what, what you get back is incredible, Absolutely. right? You just, you feel like a million bucks and you're out there and you, you create a, a protective aura around you as far as, you know, recognizing that we're all in the same boat, we're all having the st same struggles. And just because we're not talking about it doesn't mean that, you know, just because you're having a hard day, somebody else never has a hard day. We all have our struggles. So let's have the courage to reach out and be the first person to be that kind, to create that kindness and, and start that ripple effect. Through awards. So reach out and make somebody's day better. Absolutely. Such a small thing, right? I was just thankful during this whole pandemic. I had a fiance who was a teacher, so I didn't have to deal with all the teaching stuff because I had no idea what the heck I was doing. <laughs> You have no idea how awesome it is to have a teacher. <laughs> Absolutely. And three cheers for teachers, right? My heart goes out to it. You know, I don't know about you guys down there, but, you know, teachers are getting a bum rap up here, right? Because parents are angry and it's the damn teachers. And you know what? The teachers are parents and they're human beings too. And they're going home at night just as upset and just as stressed and just as tired, right? So, you know, we got to put our judgment aside and we all got to reach out and figure out how we can work together. And that comes with explaining and understanding. Wow. No, I think that this is a, such a great thing that you guys are doing. It's just, it's absolutely fantastic. And we just, I'm so thankful that we can get this, the word out here on these podcasts for this. Cause you know, you, people just, they might, they might not even realize that your service is there. And hopefully this will get out there so they can realize that, hey, there are people out there that can help, or I just need someone to help me just start that conversation. Because as, as before with mental illness, it's not just a sprint, it's a marathon, but you got to start somewhere. Absolutely. And you have our information. I'm so grateful for the opportunity, because that's our goal, like I said, is to help as many clubs and as many people as we can. And just start those early conversations. And we've already started to see with our research, we've been doing this now since the club started and families that we started with, who's, you know, I, the best thing, there was a couple of years ago, I, I had a group of kids that went through and I got invited to four grads, right? I was just delighted. And it was kids that, you know, when I sat down with their families, their families, a couple of them were in tears and didn't know how they were gonna even make it through grade eight. And, you know, everything was falling apart. And that's the other thing, too, when you are able to kind of overcome some of these challenges. And to some other people, they might seem small, but to the families that are dealing with them, they are rocking their world. But when these families and you support them getting through them and they do accomplish things like getting through to graduation or, you know, overcoming anxiety and making it to the soccer game, these things are insurmountable. The amount of joy that comes off these families is just incredible because they're real challenges, and it, but it's not just an external challenge, it's an internal challenge. And when you're able to get through that, you can get through anything. It's wonderful to see. Yeah, I mean, that's the greatest thing, I think, as you were talking about, you know, getting invited to the kids' graduation. And, and uh, when, you're, when you're an optimist and you're out there and you're serving the children in your community, that's when it would, what Nick and I always called the defining moment. When that little, little child comes up, she says, Hey, thanks. You helped send me and my little sister through cheerleading school or, or you helped us get through this. And, and, and they, it, it makes you want to cry right there on the spot. And I've had to hold back tears so many times when a child or a parent comes up and says, you know, thank you so much for, for getting us involved in this oratorical contest or this, uh, um, essay contest and, and thank you for doing that and thank you for sponsoring a golf tournament I know you guys make money but that money went to so much better things and and uh, that's that's when you uh, you know and you believe I wish every one of our optimists could have that defining moment uh, it took me a few years to get to it but but you know being active and being out there and being in the forefront is where you make the difference and that's what all of us as optimists got to do so uh, I, I, I just, I, I live every day looking for another defining moment, which will happen very shortly because all the great things we do is, as optimists and families and friends and teachers. And, and I, I, I know that your shout out to all the teachers is great because, you know, I've seen the result of working uh, with teachers here. They put a lot of time, energy, effort, their own money, right, uh, into helping serve our children. 
and and sometimes it's a you know not so thankful sometimes it's just an avenue for parents to say okay go to school you know put them out there in the public school system i don't gotta watch them but but the 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 students and the teachers they love it and and we're so thankful to our to our our teachers and churches and those people that help us you know in our mission to serve the community so uh and, and again paula thank you for everything that you're doing shane it's back to you my friend no, I just, I always, I'm appreciative that optimists were usually the ones on the front line helping our communities. And I'm just very proud of that fact uh, that I get to be an optimist here in my hometown, especially just like I said, being on the front lines and, you know, getting all this stuff out there to help kids. It's a, it's a wonderful feeling when we're out there. So as we start to, to wrap up here, uh, Paul, I, again, the, the website is miunderstanding.ca. Mm -hmm. or if everybody wants more information or is there any other way they can get in touch with you if they need more information on your program there's a contact the best bet there is a contact information at the end so if they send us an email it'll go directly to us um, but i think the big pitch at the end here is go on and explore the website and if you see if you see uh, something that you think would support something in your club by all means use it right yeah. you have my permission use it use it we've we worked really hard to make it so optimist clubs everywhere could use it uh so please do look into the mi friends program maybe something that's how we can help in your community as well um but if you have any questions reach out uh we want to help start that early conversation and you know just from what you were saying russ again optimist clubs have been supporting mental health for 100 over 100 years now so let's continue and let's continue to show the community not only what we've done, but what we can continue to do. That is a perfect way to, sit, to sum all this up tonight. We've been helping kids for over 100 years, and let's just keep on doing that. I just couldn't, you can't sum that up any better. Paula, I want to thank you for being on our program today. It was very, very informative and very very wonderful to be able to visit with you and i appreciate what you guys are doing for your community just an awesome awesome thing that's moving forward here well thanks very much for the opportunity i really appreciate it and kudos to the you guys in this podcast it's wonderful with that i would like to say uh to our listeners that we're moving forward with our optimist creed for those of you that don't know what our programs are about right now but our next one will be our third line of our creed promise yourself to make all your friends feel that there is something in them and i couldn't have found a better quote to start this off it is optimism is a happiness magnet if you stay positive good people will be drawn to you so make sure that your friends are always feel that there's something going on with them and it, moving forward with that so also as russ commented before we're kind of kind of steal one of his ideas for this podcast we're going to do our defining moment segments starting here shortly. And we want optimists to send us their defining moment story. And you can email us directly at podcast at optimist.org to tell us your story. So we can be able to have you on our program and do a, a minute bleep of you tell us that defining moment of your optimist optimist journey. So again, our podcast our email address is podcast at optimist.org. I just want to remind everybody that every day, remember to choose optimism.